It's no secret that the modern web is insanely bloated and broken. It's filled with unnecessary flashy features, tracking, ads, and just other nonsense. All of this nonsense only serves to make the web increasingly more difficult to use on low-end machines, and it serves to frustrate and disrespect the user. So, with that said, what if I said that there's an alternative web protocol to the typical internet that doesn't have any of this nonsense and aims to only provide the features that you actually need. Well, as it ends up, there is such a protocol and it's called Gemini, and we're going to be talking about it right now on the Linux Lounge. Indeed, as I said during the intro, today we're going to be talking about Gemini. And before I start, I just want to give a huge thanks to another YouTuber known as HexDSL for pointing out Gemini to me as well as the rest of his audience. Now, with that said, as I said during the opening, Gemini is an alternative to traditional web protocols such as HTTP. The goal of Gemini isn't actually to replace the modern web though, rather to exist alongside it and other similar protocols. Gemini itself is supposed to be somewhere between the modern web and a much older and simpler standard known as Gopher. Although I have to say that I think Gemini leans much more on the Gopher side of things as pages are very simple and the protocol only really has plain text, links and other features like that. Now, there are lots of technical details I could go into here, but that's never really been the focus of this channel, so much as what the software we're talking about is like to use for the end user. So, let's talk about what it's actually like to use Gemini before we actually go ahead and take a look at it. Well, given the fact that the primary design goal of Gemini is simplicity, it's actually quite a nice experience. Gemini is blisteringly fast on pretty much every computer, since websites are just plain text. Which, speaking of plain text, that's another advantage of Gemini. It doesn't have loads of flashy animations or pictures or anything like that, and pages are generally laid out very well, making everything super readable. Another thing about the experience of using Gemini is that it's a very old school experience, which some people will probably find frustrating and others will absolutely love. Personally, I love it. At the moment, Gemini doesn't really have a fully functional search engine, or at least not one that works like most people would expect, so you're sort of left to go website to website website using links. Inevitably by doing this you'll find all sorts of interesting content that you weren't looking for, but if you're looking for something specific you might struggle to find what you're looking for. However, given the fact that sites like Wikipedia and such are mirrored on Gemini, it is certainly possible to have fun viewing an old school web crawling adventure and find specific information. Another part of the old school experience that might be a bit frustrating is just how basic websites are. They're all plain text, there's no images or anything like that, which makes them highly readable, but I would have maybe liked to see support for images and such, but I think all in all, I have to say that the experience of using Gemini is actually pretty cool, and it makes me wish that the mainstream web was more simplistic like Gemini. Now. The last thing that I have to say before we go ahead and take a look at some sites on Gemini is how you get into using it. Thankfully it's all pretty simple. All you need is a Gemini browser and you're good to go. Personally the one that I've been using is Lagrange and I use that because it has a nice user interface as well as all of the comforts of a modern browser such as bookmarks and the like. If you want to use Lagrange you can get it from the AUR or you can compile it from source. Sadly there doesn't seem to be any easily available binary packages just yet and most distributions distributions that I've seen seem not to package it. But there is, however, a large list of Gemini browsers for various different platforms. So for instance, I think there's one for Windows, one for Mac OS, one for Android, and one for iOS too. And there are also terminal Gemini browsers. So no doubt, whatever your need is, you'll be able to find a Gemini browser that meets it. So with that said, let's hop over to my computer and take a look at what Gemini looks like. So indeed, as I said earlier, here we are in Gemini using my Gemini browser. Uh, this is Lagrange. It's a pretty solid Gemini browser and it has all the features that you would expect it to. You know, you've got tabs, you've got URL bar, all the buttons that you would expect. You can take bookmarks, zoom in or out, pretty much everything that you would expect from a modern web browser. It does look a little bit old school, but I think that works well with kind of the way that Gemini works. And uh, inside of our Gemini browser, as you would imagine, this is a Gemini page. And as I was talking about earlier, it looks really clean, really minimal, looks great. It's clear what everything is. And it's just generally laid out really well. And if we go over to another Gemini page, you can see a similar story. 
Now, this is the Gemini page of HexDSL. Uh, they're another Linux YouTuber. And you get a lot of this sort of thing on Gemini. People will make their own personal web pages, and they'll kind of have almost a blog type thing going on very often. And effectively, what you get a lot of on Gemini is pages from people who kind of just talk about what they think is cool. So, you know, you'll kind of be browsing Gemini, going link by link, and you'll be exposed to all sorts of things that you would have probably never even thought of. Because usually on the web, when you're on sites like YouTube and such, you, you kind of, you're looking for something specific. And if you're not being, you know, or if you're not looking for something specific, YouTube or whatever other site you're using will kind of, it'll show you what you want to see. With Gemini, that's not the case at all. You kind of, you find what is available, if that makes any sense. So consequently, as I say, you get exposed to all sorts of cool things like this. That said though, if you're looking for a good starting point with Gemini, Gemini.circumlunar.space is a pretty good starting point. It outlines what uh, Gemini intends to do, and as you can see, they say, yeah, it's light, it's quite powerful, and it takes user privacy very seriously. So yeah, the Gemini is a lot more private than the web. If we keep going, there's some documentation, there's some software that you can use, as I said earlier, there are a lot of programs that you can use to do various different Gemini things. If we keep going, you can see that we've got some web proxies, search engines, aggravators, mirrors of web uh, resources, and you can even get some free Gemini hosting apparently, so that's quite cool. Now, for the purposes of this, uh, this video, I want to go ahead and show you some mirrored services. And as you can see, you've got a lot of these. You know, you can browse stuff like The Guardian, which is a news source in the UK, Wikipedia, YouTube, The Works. So for the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at Guardian. And if we go into our new K, uh, UK rather news, you can see that, yeah, you've got all your links laid out like this. You've got dates. So it, it really makes me wonder why, you know, kind of sites like The Guardian and stuff don't just go for a simple layout like this, because this is a really, really nice way to get your news. There's no nonsense, you've got the date, you've got the title, you can click on it, and you get plain text. You know, if we click on something else, it's all plain text. So I've got to say, this is a really, really nice way to get news. And you can see you've got the site here. You know, it's just, browsing Gemini is just a great experience. If we go on to another page, let's take a look at Wikipedia, why not? And as you can see, it's all very simple. Gemini does in fact support stuff like search queries and stuff, so let's put in a search query. Let's say we want to search for Linux. And as you can see, Linux, we uh, take a second to load. But there you go, we've got a Wikipedia page in Gemini. Now, there's no kind of images or anything like that, and this isn't completely Gemini optimized, I'm gonna say. But like, you know, you could totally browse Wikipedia like this and you'd probably have a pretty good experience doing so. So, like I say, get yourself on Gemini, take a look and see what you find. It's not going to replace the modern internet by any means, but I've got to say I really, really like it. And definitely I'll be using more of it and definitely expect to see some more Gemini videos from me in the future. But with that said, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.